Today we're going to take a look at the Barnett Raptor FX crossbow. How does it stack up to other bows? What does it do good? What can it improve on? And more importantly, is it worth your money? We've been using this crossbow for a year and a half now, and we want to give you some of our feedback so you know what you're getting. Again, today we're looking at the Barnett FX, not to be confused with the Barnett Recruit. Though very similar, there are some key differences. The uh, Barnett Recruit shoots 300 feet per second, where the Barnett Raptor comes in at 330. 130 pound draw weight on the Barnett Recruit, 150 pound draw weight on the Barnett Raptor FX. The Barnett Recruit comes in black, the Barnett Raptor FX comes in camo. There is about a $100 difference in the price of the two. So for $100, you're getting 30 feet per second faster, about 20 pounds heavier on the draw weight, and again, that camo pattern versus the solid black. But that's a topic for another day. We do have both of these bows, um, so if you would like to see a review on the Recruit, you know, let us know. But today, we are going to focus on the Raptor FX. All right, pros and cons. What did we like about this bow? What did we dislike? The first and probably most obvious pro is the price. You can pick up this bow for under $400, uh, sometimes a lot cheaper than that if you're using like eBay or Amazon. And for that price, you just can't beat it. If you look at other entry-level bows, you're going to spend a lot more than that, especially if you're talking compound bows. Any bow that shoots anywhere near 330 feet per second, um, you're spending way more than, than $400. Next, this bow is small, and that's a good thing. At only 6.5 pounds and only 18 inches wide, you can take this bow wherever you want it to go. It's easy to maneuver in the tree stand, easy to maneuver in the ground blind, just easier to manage than a lot of these big, bulky crossbows that are on the market today. The third pro, and probably my favorite, is all the built-in features this bow comes with. This bow comes with an adjustable stock, so you can measure it down to shoot for kids, women, you know, smaller framed hunters, all the way out to those of us with a little bit of a longer wingspan. Comes with a built-in thumb guard, because we all know how annoying it is to walk around town with half your thumb missing from a crossbow accident. Now, I'm not saying that couldn't still happen with this bow, but it's nice to know the guard is there for extra protection. The bow comes with a pre-installed tactical rail on the underneath front side of the bow. This is where you'll mount your quiver or any other uh, accessory you have that mounts to a normal tactical rail, such as something you might have on your AR, pistol grip, a flashlight, which really leaves this open to, to your customization. This bow also comes standard with the CCD port built into the stock, so if you want to add a crank cocking device to the bow, that can easily be done. And lastly, my favorite feature of the bow is the anti-dry fire mechanism. This mechanism prevents the bow from being fired until you insert an arrow uh, into the crossbow. Now there are a couple drawbacks to this system, but we'll cover that in the cons section. A couple more points for the pros column on the Raptor FX. This bow is made right here in the United States of America. It comes with a nice 4x32 5 reticle scope. It comes with a quiver and three Easton Headhunter arrows. So all you need to do is add broadheads, and this thing's ready to hunt right out of the box. Now, with all that being said, this bow is not perfect. Especially with the cheap entry-level price, you're going to expect some drawbacks with the bow. Based on the experience we've had with the bow the last season and a half, these are the things we wish it did better. First and foremost, this thing is loud. I know on their website it boasts the description of ultra-quiet shots with every pull of the trigger. It's not. You can definitely hear this thing go off, but at 330 feet per second, you know, if you're within 30 or 40 yards of the deer, it's not going to make that much of a difference. However, anything over 40 yards, you know, there may be some drop based on that string noise. We haven't experienced that yet because every deer we've shot with this bow has been within 40 yards. Um, but I could see that potentially being a problem. Second con, you must use the rope cocking device that comes with the crossbow. Due to how narrow the bow is, you cannot cock this bow by hand as you cannot get your fingers close enough to get the string to catch in the trigger mechanism. Though this is a minor detail, this could be cumbersome in the woods if you're trying to get a follow-up shot. You do have to get those string cocking devices out, of course, unless you already have a crank cocking device installed. 
On the flip side of that, once the bow is cocked, the only way to uncock the bow is to fire an arrow. Now, this might be a common thing with newer crossbows. My brother and I personally have not used a crossbow in quite some time, and I remember the old Hortons we had, you could simply put your hand on the string, pull the trigger, and let it down um, so you don't have to fire a bolt into the ground. With this bow, again, everything's so narrow and so compressed, there's no way you're going to get your hand in there uh, without losing a finger to try to get this thing uncocked. The anti-dry firing mechanism makes its way on the pros and cons list. Though this mechanism is great, it does have one flaw. Once the system is engaged with a bolt being inserted into the crossbow, if that bolt is removed, the uh, mechanism is still engaged. Meaning, once you pull the bolt out of the crossbow, if you were to do that, you can still dry fire this bow. One thing to watch out for as well, if your bolt is not all the way seated against the string, there is a chance the string could explode on you. Again, there's so much pressure put on those limbs that if there's nothing for that string to push when it goes off, there is a chance that it might blow up. This actually happened to me the first few times I shot this bow. Um, but kudos to Barnett. I called their customer service, explained what happened. They were great about sending me a new replacement string. I had it within two to three days, took it to the bow shop, got it put on, and I haven't had any issues since. But reading a lot of reviews online, I think this is a common problem, but mostly goes back to just user error with that arrow not being firmly seated against the string. The last knock on this bow is the plastic. There is plastic everywhere. And again, with a cheaper bow, you're going to expect some of this, but there's a lot of plastic in places you think there would have been rubber. The grip around the trigger is all plastic, as well as the adjustable stock that goes against your shoulder. Now, this didn't end up being as big of a deal as I thought it was going to be initially. We've used this bow in a lot of different weather conditions, snow, rain, cold, the heat. And really, once you're out in the woods, you don't really notice the, the plastic as much as you think you would. The grip around the trigger still feels nice, and it's a crossbow, so it's not going to kick you hard enough to really warrant a rubber padding uh, on the adjustable stock. So just to recap, there are a lot more pros than cons to the Barnett Raptor FX. For the price point of this bow, you're getting a lot of features for a little bit of money, which makes this a perfect entry-level bow. I actually bought this one for my wife and my kids to use, but decided to give it a test first last season. And I was able to harvest one of the biggest bucks I've ever killed with it, so now it's, it's one of my favorites. If you're looking to get into hunting and don't want to break the bank, this is the perfect bow for you. Or if you have young kids and you want to get them into hunting, but don't want to put too much of an investment into it, because who knows, they may not like it, this is a good place to start. So concluding thoughts, this is a great bow. It is by no means perfect, but you're not going to find a better value for your dollar. But hey, don't take our word for it. Go try one yourself. Oh my God, Matthew. Look at you. Look at my arrow. Hey guys, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. And if you get a chance, go check out our website at www.hambrosoutdoors.com.